So one of, one of the changes that's occurred in, in, in cancer, and specifically in kidney cancer, is there's some novel ways that we deliver radiation therapy today that's different than the way we delivered it five and ten years ago. And although historically when we've written chapters and books on kidney cancer, kidney cancer is often considered a radio-resistant disease, uh, but I think we need to be thinking about relooking at that, especially in light of some of the new technology. So we've invited, we've invited Dr. Hakimian, who's an expert in radiation oncology here at Cedar sinai Medical Center, to talk to us about some of these approaches. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Figlin. Uh, first of all, I'm not a radiologist, so uh, we usually don't read the x-rays. Uh, we treat, use radiation therapy to actually treat cancer. Uh, what are the new techniques that we have developed in radiation oncology? Uh, just to give you a little bit of historical data, uh, in the old days, uh, what we did was we used radiation treatment for uh, uh, treatment on, on a daily basis. We figured out uh, that radiation, if you give a small amount of radiation on a daily basis, you can actually kill the tumor cells, whereas you're able to spare a lot of normal tissue. Now, to give you a little bit of a history, what exactly is radiation? It's basically everything that you see around us. Uh, radiation is everywhere. Sound, light, cell phone, x-rays, uh, sun rays. And uh, we utilize very specific amount of radiation in the very high energy to actually utilize that. And we use that part of the radiation to actually kind of sterilize the tumor. Uh, as I mentioned, the intensity of radiation therapy uh, increases as it enters, enters the cell, and then all of a sudden it starts giving up its radiation to the normal tissue, and as it exits the other side of the body, it actually kind of decreases. So what it does is actually as it deposits its energy in the cells, it damages the DNA of these tumor cells, and unfortunately also can damage the DNA of the normal cells. So it can actually cause some damage to normal tissue. And uh, unfortunately, radiation doesn't differentiate between what's a normal cell and what's a cancer cell. So the trick for us is to actually find out different ways to actually uh, differentiate between how we can actually manipulate this radiation that we're giving to kill more of the cancer cells and spare the normal cells. Uh, for the many years, what we have done is we actually figured out if you give standard dose of radiation, which is about 1 or 1.8 or 2 gray, and that's not a, a color gray, but rather the units of radiation, you can actually do more damage if you escalate the dose and you give small amount of radiation, let's say on Monday, you give small amount of the radiation on Tuesday, and you keep on doing the same kind of radiation over day after day for like six weeks, you can actually kill a lot more cells in the tumor and spare the normal cells. So there's no, really not going to be any damage long term to the, uh, let's say, colon or uh, rectum or any other structures, lungs. And that has been what we have been doing for many years. Now, as we increase the daily dose of radiation above 2 gray, 2.5, 3 gray, uh, nowadays we even give like 15, 20 gray of radiation, there's going to be a lot more damage of radiation to the uh, area that we radiate. So the trick is actually if you spread the radiation from different areas, you can actually do a lot more damage to the tumor cells and hopefully can spare the normal cells. So unfortunately, not all cells are the same, and renal cells are traditionally considered one of the areas that is relatively radio-resistant. We have on one area uh, spectrum lymphomas which, and seminomas, which are extremely sensitive, and we don't require that high of a dose of radiation. Uh, whereas melanoma, sarcomas, and renal cells, which are considered radio resistance, requiring a very high dose of radiation on a daily basis, maybe seven or eight weeks of radiation. And usually, most of the normal cells are not able to tolerate this much radiation. So, traditionally, we have not been using radiation treatment for. Uh, definitive treatment or uh, for treatment of renal cell. Until recently, there is actually has been resurgence of this, mainly because there are better techniques, we have better definition of the volume, we have CT scans which are 
uh, much better in terms of defining. We have MRIs. Our computers are becoming very sophisticated. Nowadays, we can actually do a very large number of calculations in a very short period of time, and we also can figure out different angles of radiation that can come from different uh, areas, all concentrating on one area and basically blasting the tumor without causing any damage to normal cells. Our machines have been also becoming very sophisticated. In the old days, we uh, used to use the machines that actually were able to give the radiation only. Nowadays, we have machines that we can actually do a CAT scan on the head of the machine, so we actually know exactly where the radiation is going beforehand. We are using CAT scan on a regular basis uh, to better define the volumes that needs to be treated. And uh, also, uh, there is uh, newer techniques that we have. If you imagine, if you're taking a deep breath in and out, your whole chest moves, your abdomen moves. And if you are trying to be very precise with the radiation in a small area, uh, you're talking about the moving targets. And that moving target needs to be addressed. And we have the new technology that we can actually beam the radiation while the radiation is on during certain period of breathing pattern. Or we can actually define the volume of the tumor during different phases of breathing so we can actually have a better understanding and we can make sure we can treat the tumor very well. So what exactly do we treat when we are treating somebody with a renal cell? Unfortunately, there is no benefit of radiation therapy for in an adjuvant setting. So if somebody has uh, their kidney removed, there is no benefit of giving radiation treatment. Usually when we have tumors that are metastatic uh, or causing problems, that's when we start coming into play. One of the most, uh, one of the areas that actually we see most of the radiation given is uh, usually chemotherapies or other agents do not cross, cross the blood-brain barrier, so the brain becomes a sanctuary site. And oftentimes we find that there is going to be tumors that are metastasized to the brain. Now, it's kind of very difficult for us to treat these patients with the traditional way of treating with whole brain radiation therapy, mainly because they're going to be eradicating a tumor which is relatively radio resistance and you have to treat the entire brain with the radiation, you're going to cause a lot of patients who are going to be having a lot of uh, cognitive problems and we may end up uh, causing a lot of brain damage. So uh, there are actually things that we can do for that. And also if somebody has, let's say, bony metastasis, they are in pain, radiation treatment is extremely good in terms of controlling that pain and relieving the pain. So uh, again, this is just a spectrum of the radiation beam that we see. Uh, you can see that it's everywhere, uh, anywhere from microwave, uh, visible light, and uh, x-rays, gamma rays, and uh, going back to Iran, I guess this is like uh, nuclear powers. And what we are using is actually some radiation that is actually in this area, gamma ray and x-ray, to treat the patients. So uh, what will happen is uh, when we do the treatment, uh, the radiation goes in at certain distance. This is, this is the skin of the patient. This is the depth of penetration. If we give, let's say, 180 units of radiation, uh, the skin is relatively spared, and then there's a maximum response of radiation to a certain depth, and then it deposits its energy going as it goes out. So if you are treating a patient whose tumor is right here, you have to give a very high dose of radiation to this area or even the skin to do the damage to that. So what will happen is in the old days, what we ended up doing is if you were going to be treating from the back, you ended up having a whole ulceration in the skin, which was uh, very bad and would never heal. Uh, now, in order for us to do that, this is a patient who has a prostate cancer. Uh, as you can see, uh, the prostate itself is located here. The rectum is sitting here. The bladder is sitting here. Instead of giving the radiation from one side, you can actually give the radiation from different sides. And what will happen is uh, you end up getting the distribution of radiation. Now, imagine instead of giving four radiation beams, you give radiation from like 360 different angles or 720 different angles, what we call rotational arc. We can basically concentrate on the radiation on the tumor and minimize the dose of radiation to the tumor cells. 
And the idea here is you really want to make sure that the toxicity of radiation is damaged to their normal cells. And the response is actually what we are trying to do, is, which is basically killing the tumor cells. So what we are trying to do is actually separate these two curves from each other. The idea is if you want to control the tumor with very accuracy, you want to make sure that you uh, do enough damage to this and have a very minimal toxicity at the same dose. Now, what can we do to actually separate these two curves from each other so we can actually get a much better response? One is uh, what we get some help every now and then from our uh, medical oncologists, what we call radio sensitizers, drugs that can actually help us to make the radiation more effective, fractionated radiation treatment. Those were w what we used to do up to recently. Now, a few things that happened uh, in the old days when we were treating patients, we used to cut blocks. And these blocks were probably about 10, 15 pounds, and you could only put it in front of one radiation beam. Now, this is part of our machine, and that actually shows us the, uh, these leaves that you see. There are about 120 leaves that you see over here, and what will happen is these leaves can be open and closed. And these are blocks that actually can come in front of radiation beam as it comes out of the machine. So if you have a tumor here, and you have a structure that you're trying to avoid, you can actually, in the old days, we used to actually cut these blocks to actually treat from one angle. Nowadays, we can put these blocks that you saw previously and that can actually block the tumor pretty much very similar to this. The advantage of these blocks is that you can actually have more uh, angles of radiation that you can treat simultaneously. You're not just limited to treating from the front, back, right, and left lateral. You can treat from, as I mentioned, 360 degrees angle. And radiation can actually come from what we call arc therapy, which is basically rotate around. And these blocks can actually change positions simultaneously, and we can give the treatment over, let's say, five, 10 minutes and deliver a very high dose of radiation treatment. And the other thing that we can do is we can actually change the intensity of radiation. This is an X-ray, and by just changing the intensity of radiation during the uh, certain time, you can actually develop X-rays, and you can actually see this is Albert Einstein. Uh, the picture of Albert Einstein that should develop an X-ray. So it's a great way of doing the treatment. We can actually pretty much brush the radiation treatment the way that we want it. Now, it's great if you can do that uh, on a machine, but what about we also need accuracy? And we certainly don't want to be inaccurate with the radiation. <laughs> so accuracy is extremely important for us. So what can we do to increase this accuracy? First thing first, uh, I did mention uh, brain. I do a lot of gamma knife cases. And uh, one of the things that we can do is actually we can have these devices uh, pretty much screwed under local anesthetic. Believe it or not, actually, this is not very painful. And we put this frame on. Now, with this frame on, we can actually get uh, some, uh, we can put, uh, get images. And from these devices that we put on this, uh, device, we can actually have fiducial marker and know exactly the exact location of every structure inside the brain. So if there's a tumor in the brain, we can actually pinpoint it. We use that for gamma knife, we use that for X knife, and if you are pretty much knowing that uh, this uh, frame is in the same spot, which this thing is not going to move, then you can actually deliver the radiation treatment. And once the patient is ready to get treated, you basically put them on the head of the machine. Uh, frame hasn't moved that much, we can actually do a quality assurances and then subsequently do the delivery of the radiation. Now, what you see here is uh, basically these are arc therapy, as I mentioned. Basically, the radiation starts from here, goes into the different angle, then we turn the table of the machine and do another arc and then another arc. So what it does for us is actually it gives small amount of radiation from each beam and where they converge, we get a full dose of radiation. So imagine this is where the, our target is. We give a very high dose of radiation. And as uh, you can see, these lines that you see are what we call isodose lines. These lines actually drop farther and farther. So if you are treating, let's say, the trigeminal nerve, which is sitting right here, 
uh, we can blast it, give like about 60, 70 gray of radiation, which is tremendous amount of radiation. And if I do that in anywhere inside the body, I can pretty much make a hole or cause damage to that area. And the structure that is next to it, which is a brain stem, gives very minimal amount of radiation. So we can actually do a very good job of delivering high dose of radiation to the brain in this structure and do a very dam uh, small damage. You don't have to take my word for it. These are actually some of the real patients that we treated. This is one of the cases that this uh, stuff that you see, the white stuff, is actually where the tumor is. Uh, this patient had one tumor here, one tumor here, uh, another tumor up down here. And once we did a treatment several months later, we actually did a, uh, MRIs, and you can see the structures that were here are pretty much gone. And what you see is actually just necrosis and dead cells. So this actually worked very well for this patient. So for brain metastasis, we can do a great job of uh, delivering high doses. And uh, depending on the size of the metastasis, we can actually control the, uh, these lesions up to about 80, 90% of the time, which is remarkable. So somebody has brain metastasis, chemotherapy doesn't work, whole brain radiation therapy really doesn't work as well. The gamma knife or X knife or other forms of radiation therapy can deliver a very high dose of radiation and do a very good job of damaging the tumor. Now, if tumors are too big for us, we don't consider gamma knife as the choice. We like to make sure that we can resect them if possible uh, because the collateral damage from the radiation to the normal tissue can be substantial and we like to give either smaller uh, uh, volumes of treatment. So anything that is above 3 cm, we don't like to treat with gamma knife. We either recommend that they get uh, multiple radiation treatment, or alternatively, we like them to actually have a surgery. Now, moving on, uh, the brain, we can actually put frames on people's head. What else can we do? Uh, this is uh, what we see here is actually a 3D uh, dimensional structure of the, the body. You can see the lungs are here, the white. Uh, the trachea is here. and. Uh, uh, just before that is just the lung, and then we have other structures uh, where the tumors are. And over here, what we see is basically if we have a body here, and we are looking at the tumor volume here, and this is a spinal cord, uh, what you see the 95% and 30% is actually the actual dose of radiation that is being given. So I can deliver a very high dose of radiation treatment to the spine where the tumor might be, causing severe pain, damage that, and give a very small amount of radiation therapy to the, uh, about a third of the dose of radiation therapy to the spinal cord without causing any spinal cord injury. So this is remarkable. Saying that again, let's say this is a tumor that we see in the spinal cord, spinal column. This is a spinal cord, and you can see this tumor is actually pressing on the spinal cord, pushing it backwards. And these are the spine itself. So if I draw the volume of the tumor that I can have here, I can basically do the treatment uh, to this side, and I can treat it. And this is just uh, uh, what we call a color uh, wash of this tumor. You can see the red is where we get the full dose of radiation. Blue is where the radiation beams are coming in from different angles, and we can basically pinpoint the dose of radiation to this vertebral body. And nowadays, uh, we can actually give about 18 gray, which is very high dose of radiation therapy to the spine, eradicate the tumor in that spine without causing any injury. The uh, advantage of this is actually we get a relief very fast, it's very effective, and it's very durable. Standard dose of radiation, when I do the treatment, 30 gray in 10 fractions, I can actually control the pain, but usually the pain is not going to be achieve, uh, uh, achievable or uh, last beyond a year or two. And usually the tumor can come back in the same spot. Whereas if I do the radiation this way with a high dose of radiation, what we call stereotactic radiotherapy or stereotactic radiosurgery with, to the body or uh, SBRT, we can actually deliver a very high dose of radiation treatment. And there are different machines. CyberKnife is one. Basically, 
that can deliver the radiation. It's a machine that actually travels and uh, deliver the radiation through different angles. Or alternatively, there are different uh, things that we have. So if I have a treatment uh, and I can actually deliver the radiation here, is it gonna be exactly in the same spot? Uh, I put this back again, I wanna make sure that I'm accurate with the body as well. So the, one of the things that we do have is uh, statactic body radiotherapy, as I mentioned, is respiration. I'm concerned about respiratory gating. If, if we all take a deep breath in and out, we know that the whole abdomen and chest moves. And if I have a tumor in the lung, that can actually move up and down. It can move anterior posteriorly or front and the back. Or it can actually sometimes move to the sides. So part of the job that I do, if I really want to be accurate, I want to make sure I include all the tumor, and I want to make sure that I exclude as much of a lung or intestines or any other structure that are out there. And we are discovering that some structures move a lot, some structures don't move at all. And we can actually use respiratory gating. We have devices that we can use so the patient actually take a deep breath in, out, and then they can actually visualize exactly when the radiation is going in. And we can actually cycle the radiation beam as they are breathing at certain phase of the breathing. So they're exhaling, they're holding their breath for uh, 10 seconds, 15 seconds, the radiation is on. Then they take it, uh, breathe back, and then we ask them to take a deep breath in. It takes a few minutes longer for us to treat, but at least we are much more concentrated and we are much tighter with our field of radiation treatment. This is a device that we have here at Cedars. Uh, uh, this is a Trilogy. Uh, this is what the radiation machine looks like. Uh, what you see here is actually a CAT scan that we have on the head of the machine. And the purpose of the CAT scan is we do acquire images from the CAT scan every time we do the treat treatment. And what we need to do is we need to make sure that uh, what we are treating is the exact same spot. So if you notice here, there are about uh, uh, four images that you see. Two of them are the same as the other two. Two of them are the ones that we acquired at the time of the CT scan, and two of them are the, uh, the ones that we are actually getting at the time of the treatment. And before we turn the machine on, we may need to move the patient about half a cm or one cm, and we know that the uh, treatment is going to be going in the same spot, an exact same spot. We make that adjustment before we turn the machine on when we get into the treatment. And we can see it actually in three-dimensionally, not just one image, but rather three images, axial, uh, sagittal, and uh, coronal images. Uh, now, what can, we do to, what can we do with the radiation? We do treat patients who have brain metastasis, Spine metastasis, nowadays I think with the technology that we have, uh, we can uh, treat some of the patients who have uh, tumors that are in the lung. I think somebody who has isolated lesions and we have exhausted other options, certainly statactic body radiotherapy can deliver very high dose of radiation. I think they can actually control the tumor in that site. So hopefully we can actually improve on disease-free survival, we can actually uh, control some of the symptoms that may happen if the tumor is in the lung, if the tumor is in the bone, if the tumor is causing bleeding, we can deliver a very high dose of radiation therapy. And uh, I reassure everybody that we are not going to cause any problem. Nobody is going to have that three hands here. And thank you. What questions can I answer? Questions? I understand when you say you can target to a specific spot, you control, like if you were shooting at this thing here, you control the depth of it as well so it don't go all the way through or something? Correct. Correct. So you control it all? Uh, well, there, as I mentioned, the radiation goes in at certain distance and what I, well, if I put a radiation beam coming from this side, it's gonna exit from this side. Right. So the trick is you wanna have multiple different beams of radiation. So with gamma knife, they have like 201 radiation sources. Each one of them give a very small dose of radiation. So implication of that is this small dose of radiation is not gonna cause any damage to the brain itself. Whereas where all these are converging, 
that's where we get a very high dose of radiation that can actually eradicate the tumor. Okay. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you.